Hello, welcome to the Tuesday, December 31st, 2019 edition of the Sands and Storm Center's Stormcast. My name is Johannes Ulrich, and today I'm recording from Jacksonville, Florida. I made a couple of small updates uh, to our API over the weekend. Most notably, I read it a little bit how our thread feeds work. Now, these thread feeds are essentially various IP address groups and such that we import from different sources. One fairly popular one is where we offer IP addresses for hosts that are scanning for Shodan. When I added a similar site, uh, I guess it's pronounced Onify, but really hard uh, to tell that basically works of like Shodan and added their IP address as well. And I also offer now a feed for the host names. Check out the diary from Monday with details about how to access uh, these feeds. And if you're using our suspicious domain lists, uh, we had some false positive issues uh, in the last couple of weeks, and I think I fixed them. The problem was that abuse.ch discontinued one of their feeds uh, that we were using, and that sort of upset our scoring system somewhat. Also keep in mind that the low feed is the one that actually has most likely false positives. If you're taking the high one, you'll get less domains, but also a lower chance of false positives. And as every year between Christmas and New Year, we do have in Germany the Chaos Communication Congress or short C3. Well, this time it's in Leipzig and a bunch of great talks. So just want to talk about a couple of random ones here in the show notes. I'll link to their schedule, which has also links uh, to various recordings and such. One talk by Samuel Gross and Natalie Silvanovich uh, did talk, for example, about some recent vulnerabilities in iMessage. Now, these vulnerabilities have been fixed now, but the talk went into quite a bit of detail in how they could actually be exploited, which of course is the next challenge. The interesting thing about these vulnerabilities is that they essentially allow remote code execution by just sending an iMessage. So there is no user interaction involved on the receivers and, and they demonstrated how to actually then take advantage of this flaw to execute code on the iPhone. While these particular vulnerabilities have been patched, uh, one can only guess that future vulnerabilities, of course, would benefit from having these exploit techniques already available. A talk by a Korean research uh, group uh, did uh, introduce a new technique kind of to interfere with LTE signals. The difference here to the old techniques was that instead of just simply overpowering an existing base station, which of course isn't always that easy, they instead just inject additional signals into the normal traffic between a handset and the tower. In doing so, they can essentially then disrupt connections, they can trick the phone to connect to their fake base station, or using less power and also being harder to detect than sort of the traditional uh, attacks that really sort of rely more on a denial of service against uh, the regular base stations. And the third one I want to mention is a talk about uh, Bluetooth and Bluetooth vulnerabilities. Now, nothing sort of outrageous here. I think uh, many of these attacks do require some access to one of the endpoints. But uh, one, I think, interesting scenario that uh, they discussed was that Android has the ability to automatically unlock and essentially wake the phone if it's connected to a trusted Bluetooth. Bluetooth device. And the way this is often used is to automatically unlock the phone when you are inside your car. But by actually extracting some of the keys that are usually stored in memory within the Bluetooth device in the car, someone could then emulate that device and wake your phone. So kind of an interesting attack here. Uh, they also talked about other vulnerabilities in 
common Bluetooth chipsets. Of course, uh, that has always uh, been sort of, uh, if you look at recent patches for mobile phones, uh, Bluetooth uh, components are pretty much updated all the time. The speaker here also noted that uh, the Bluetooth subsystem is not so easy to actually reset. You typically do need to completely reboot the phone to sort of reset the Bluetooth system. So just turning Bluetooth on and off is not going to do the trick. Well, and that's it for today. It's also the last podcast for the year. A couple things about the remainder of the week. I'll do at least one podcast. Probably Thursday, we'll see what's coming up. Also, with the new year, I want to revive something that I started with, well, last January. And that's the Raspberry Pi giveaway. If you find an error, in particular, if you note that I'm using the wrong year during January, uh, drop me a message and uh, I'll give away one Raspberry Pi a month, hoping that you will use it to help us out with our Honeypot project. And don't forget, uh, today we also have a special webcast coming up at 1 p.m. Eastern for the Citrix vulnerability. So hope to see you there. And if not, talk to you again on Thursday or Friday. Bye.